Yeah. Um, what did you think on receipt of that? No, I'm, I, I'm disappointed with myself really in my you know reaction after the game. Um, there's a you know a few things that that disappoint me with that as well. Obviously, I, I've I've got to take the the blame um, for waiting for Anthony Taylor after the game. Um, I think the decisions were. You know, I think 99% of people who've seen them have seen them and, and said, you know, they were poor decisions. Um, and, you know, it, it's very, very tough to take on that, given that moment. So really and truthfully, with my experience and the, the amount of times I've been, or as long as I've been in the game, I shouldn't have waited for the referee to ask him, you know, why he didn't give the penalties. What What is disappointing is, is the fact that, you know, we send in a... A response. I've spoken to Mike. I'll try to get older. Mike Riley who's in Japan, and, and Mike has sent me a message back, and we've not been able to get hold of each other. Kemp has dealt with the delegate. Um, we've had no feedback whatsoever what the referee feels or what he thinks about those decisions. And then, you know, I get the fine. The club get punished because I think we've dropped points because of those decisions. Um, and then you see that Anthony Taylor has got one of the top games this weekend. And Mike has always said that he's wanted feedback from the professional game. He's wanted to get closer to to us as an organisation. The LMA are doing, I think, the most they possibly can to try and bring us together. Yet we get no feedback in respect of Anthony's performance on Saturday. And not only that, we look at the fact that you know he has got the Sky game which is most probably the best game and, and most viewers will watch on Saturday. So how does it work? Is it, you like Sunday morning when you get the card and you, you mark the referee? And you yeah, I, the I, I've, I've said really what, what I want to say on it in respect that I, I just, you know, I, I, I just hope and pray that, you know, that, that they, and, and, you know, that we're just not playing, that we're just not, it's not lip service alone. I hope they do take some, some notice of what we do and especially the people and we've always done reports. We've always talked to, to Mike. Um, and like I say, the disappointing thing is, is that you just don't get no feedback from the referee. And we certainly haven't had no feedback this week on, on you know, the, the uh, Anthony's performance. On the, the fine, um, Greg Dyke has been a fantastic advocate for transparency in FIFA and UEFA. I'll be writing him a letter and asking him you know, where my £8,000 is going to go. Because if it's going to go to a charity, because, you know, the FA are a non-profitable organisation, if it's going to a charity, which I hope it is, I'd like to send it up to the Donna Louise Hospice in Stoke-on-Trent. And I'd like transparency on that so everybody can see that my money, and let's, let's be fair, there's enormous amounts of money being taken uh, by the FA now in respect of managers being fined. And I think we have a, a right. It's not the FA's money, it's my money. And I think I have a right to know where that money's going um, and who it's going to and where, what account, and from that account where it goes to. And I'll be asking Greg, and I'm sure I'll get a great response because he has been spot on with transparency in respect of UEFA and FIFA. Have you worked um, defensively? I spoke to Johnny Evans yesterday and he said that you've all had a talk and think you've got to the bottom of where things went wrong against Leicester, apart from decisions? Yeah, I, th I think we've been, especially at home, our away record has been absolutely first class. Um, but at home, we've we've switched off and been punished. Um, and, you know, for people to say we don't score enough goals, I think, what was it, three, four games we played at home, we've scored two goals. Um, and the opposition have scored three against us. So it's it's completely the opposite away from home, the, the way we've defended away from home to the way we've defended at home. Um, there are reasons, and we've been through one of the, one of the reasons um, in that respect. Um, but, you know, we need, to, we, you know, we need to look at it and we need to tighten up. And we, like I say, we, we spend a lot of time looking and analysing what we're doing as a team and as a group. And the players have responded well this week. We've worked, showed them, you know, clippings of videos where we think you know, the, the weaknesses or the weaknesses that we've shown where, where they've been and hopefully they take it on board. It's a big, uh, big weekend for Johnny Evans. Uh, well, Fletch, you know, uh, you know, Anders is going back, although, he, you know, Bowl will be playing, Anders is going back to Manchester United, Fletch is going back to Manchester United, Fletch is, 
absolute you know, legend at Manchester United in respect of you know what he went through and and what he he, he helped achieve at that football club. So it's not just Johnny. You know, Johnny will enjoy it, I'm sure, and I'm sure he'll get a great reception, and and he deserves to as well. What's your team news? Uh, we've got one or two little knocks and niggles, so you know, we've decided to go up there today and take the lads up there. We won't train down here. We'll take them up there, give them a little bit more time to rest, and then we'll um, we'll pick a team um, that will have to run around a lot tomorrow. Who's got the knocks? Oh, I'd rather keep that to myself at the moment. Well, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Pete. Cheers. Hi, Tony. Um, we've mentioned Ben United's woes. Um, <coughs> But we've also mentioned your away form. They're struggling to score goals at home, and you're playing well away at the moment. And you've kept a few clean sheets yourself. Are you confident of getting something from Old Trafford? Well, I, I think it's going to be difficult. I think you know, if you look at it in a in clear light of the day, the the money that Louis has spent, the players that they've got, um, the depth of, of their squad, it shouldn't really be a contest. Um, but if you get 11 players running around on any given day who will work hard for your team and, and give it their best, then who knows? Um, you know, there's lots of outside influences that um, can affect the game of football. And um, you know, you just you just hope and pray that things go for you. You've got a good record there, there over the last few seasons, haven't you? And if you beat them, you become only the second team in Premier League history to have won at Old Trafford three seasons in a row. I'll mention that to the players tonight. I'll write that down and mention it to the place. I didn't realise that. Yeah. Just one final question. How happy are you with the start of the season? Because it seems like you've taken the positives, but also you're critical of the mistakes you've made. Yeah, I'll, I, I just, you know, someone just said, you know, did, you, you know, what do you need? You know, we we need a few more players to 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 get the balance right in the team. We still haven't got that. Still don't feel as though the balance is right, and um, we need to to bring in one or two to to try and get that balance right. Um, but you know it's a tough league. It's a tough league. Are you looking at players at the moment? Yeah, we've been non-stop. Um, but you know, it, it, there's all so again, there's all certain things that that need to be put in place for for anything like that to happen. But we, you know, we we you know we we certainly need to move one or two. There's one or two players who have not been playing, who are desperate to play. They need to go out and play. And if that gives us the room then and the opportunity to bring one or two in, then we'll desperately try and do that.